Okay, well, there have always been rumors, and quite frankly, I always thought that they were conspiracies because they sounded crazy. First and foremost, rumors that he was gay. Also rumors that he was behind the killing of his quote-unquote best friend, the notorious B.I.G., and also that he had something to do with the killing of Tupac. And he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Candace Owens has exposed the complete list of rappers Diddy had gay affairs with, shedding light on the shady lifestyle of Diddy amid all the recent accusations. Moreover, Owens ignited fervent debate by making audacious connections between Diddy's ongoing legal woes and the enigmatic demise of Michael Jackson. This, but there is, in fact, a Diddy and Michael Jackson connection. Yes, the lawsuit that we have been covering and following, so much being revealed, you're not going to believe that somehow it is connected to Michael Jackson and his death. In a recent installment of her podcast, Owens delved deep into the intricacies of Diddy's legal entanglements, voicing apprehension regarding what she views as a disconcerting lack of media scrutiny. With her boldness, Owens sparked a flurry of reactions on social platforms, probing into the media's selective attention towards Diddy's lawsuit versus the widely covered Jeffrey Epstein case. She hinted at a shadowy undercurrent, implying that powerful individuals in both Hollywood and politics could be subject to blackmail, thus explaining their unsettling silence on certain matters. Owens delved deeper into the connections, suggesting that the person supposedly implicated in concealing Diddy's son's involvement in a shooting was once Michael Jackson's chief of security, who was around during the tragic passing of the pop legend. The conservative commentator insinuated that drastic actions, including the possibility of murder, might have been undertaken to safeguard the interests of those implicated. Yes, the Diddy lawsuit is absolutely crazy. Full stop. What if I told you guys that it is about to get even crazier, that there is directly a link to Michael Jackson's death? I want to be clear that when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, the lawsuits, his death, I thought that we were in full conspiracy theory territory when people were saying that Michael Jackson was killed. In her podcast, Owens brought attention to five crucial points from Diddy's lawsuit, suggesting its ramifications might eclipse even the infamous Jeffrey Epstein case. Expressing her concerns on social media, she underscored the lack of media coverage surrounding Diddy's legal troubles, hinting at a potential conspiracy involving influential figures facing black Blackmail. Owens reiterated her claims in a YouTube post, implying a concealed agenda within Hollywood and the media to suppress coverage of the Combs lawsuits, shielding prominent individuals from public scrutiny. Amidst the controversy and doubt stirred by her assertions, they unveil the complex power structures entrenched in the entertainment realm and the possible fallout from legal controversies involving influential personalities. The sudden demise of Michael Jackson at 50 in June 2009 sent shockwaves across the globe. Yet amidst the grieving fans, a faction of aficionados speculates on the possibility of a meticulously staged spectacle. In a fascinating turn of events, investment banker David Dunn took the stand in the U.S. tax court in Los Angeles in early 2017, hinting that Jackson was perilously close to financial ruin before his passing. This revelation further fueled conjecture that the iconic king of pop might have engineered his own demise to evade mounting financial troubles by assuming a new persona, deepening the enigma surrounding his tragedy. Adding to the intrigue in 2017, Jackson's daughter Paris confided in Rolling Stone magazine, expressing her belief that her father had met with foul play. In her perspective, all signs seem to indicate a comprehensive conspiracy theory. However, true fans and those close to the family are aware that it was orchestrated. This revelation sparked speculation among online conspiracy enthusiasts, some of whom speculated whether she was hinting at groups like the Illuminati. Here's what Owens thinks about it. I actually know a lot of people that are in the industry who believe that Michael Jackson was killed, and I just thought, it just sounds too too whacked out to believe that somebody intentionally killed Michael Jackson. Of course, why would they do that? And also, I was believing the media. The media was extensively saying every single day that he was a pedophile, even though he factually won his case. I allowed my image of Michael Jackson certainly to be corroded by the media. In 2012, Janet, Rabbi, Randy, Tito, and Jermaine, iconic siblings of the singer, made waves by penning a letter to John Bronca and John McClain, executives of Jackson's estate. Their accusations of fraud, forgery, exploitation, and mistreatment were boldly aired on the gossip site Caboos. At the core of their dispute lay the contention that Michael Jackson wasn't present in Los Angeles on July 7, 2002, the alleged date of his will signing. This challenge cast doubt on the document's authenticity. Additionally, 
The siblings asserted that Jackson had openly voiced his aversion towards Bronca and McLean, expressing his desire to exclude them from his life. In response, estate representatives refuted these claims, expressing dismay at what they labeled as baseless and defamatory accusations stemming from online conspiracy theories. They pointed out that these allegations were made by certain family members deliberately excluded from Jackson's will. Venturing deeper into the realm of conspiracy theories, Latoya Jackson, the sister of Michael Jackson, has openly expressed her conviction regarding her brother's demise. Adding another layer to the intrigue from last year, his son came forward with a note purportedly written by Jackson just weeks before his passing. The note chillingly conveyed his fear for his life, suggesting a plot to end it. These shocking claims have ignited debates and fueled speculation about the circumstances surrounding Michael Jackson's incident and the lingering mysteries in its aftermath. The culprit? A deadly concoction of substance, including the anesthetic propofol, was found in his system. This substance had been administered by Jackson's personal physician, Conrad Murray, for two months to alleviate the pop icon's insomnia. In the courtroom, Murray ultimately confronted the consequences of his actions. Back in 2011, he was convicted of involuntary manslaughter, resulting in a two-year imprisonment. Prior to the trial, Murray's attorney suggested that Jackson's financial troubles may have driven him to desperate measures. However, the judge swiftly dismissed any inquiries into Jackson's financial affairs. Howard Whiteman, the legal representative for Jackson's estate, expressed skepticism towards the notion of Michael contemplating suicide, deeming it an implausible theory. In a recent revelation to ABC News, a law enforcement insider disclosed that the renowned celebrity had become heavily dependent on the powerful painkillers Oxycontin and Demerol, receiving daily doses of these medications. It unveils a melancholic narrative of a music icon ensnared in a labyrinth of substances, ultimately culminating in his premature demise. Meanwhile, in the past months, Sean Diddy Combs, the influential hip-hop mogul, has found himself embroiled in a string of legal battles facing allegations of misconduct. Once emblematic of wealth, a figure emerged to revolutionize rap's commercial landscape, leveraging his ownership in the Bad Boy Entertainment record label to construct an expansive empire encompassing fashion, media, liquor, and beyond. There is allegedly some sort of a blackmail ring that is operating throughout Hollywood and that artists that are producing music are actually being controlled uh, via being induced into drugs at parties. And then what takes place is they're being recorded and sometimes they're being recorded while they are in with minors. In a segment from his 2017 documentary, can't stop, won't stop, Combs declared. Whatever I want, I have to get, epitomizing his resolute determination. However, recent accusations have cast a contrasting shadow on his assertiveness, hinting at a potentially aggressive and domineering nature. Lawsuits filed in recent months present a challenging narrative, diverging from the image of the quintessential hustler mogul. Over three decades, a timeline unfolds, juxtaposing pivotal moments in Combs' career with allegations from civil suits, exposing not just a troubling history of purported violence violent behavior, but also the role of power and celebrity in shielding him from scrutiny. In 1990, Combs embarked on his journey in the music industry as an intern at Uptown Records, working under the guidance of executive Andre Harrell. However, the trajectory of his career took a grim turn when a lawsuit filed in November 2023 alleged that Combs, along with R&B singer Aaron Hall, mistreated an unnamed victim and her friend following a music industry event. Shockingly, the lawsuit further claimed that they mistreated her when confronted. Another lawsuit filed in November 2023 alleged that Combs mistreated and videotaped Joy Dickerson, a 19-year-old, after a date in 1991. Despite these deeply troubling allegations, Combs persisted in advancing his career. In 1993, following his dismissal from Uptown Records, he ventured into establishing his own label, Bad Boy Records. This move proved pivotal, propelling the careers of prominent artists like Craig Mack, The Notorious B, IG, Mace, The Locks, and Faith Evans. However, the narrative took a legal detour in 1996 when Combs faced charges of criminal mischief after threatening a photographer from the New York Post with a firearm. This incident shed light on a recurring pattern of confrontations, and legal entanglements that would ultimately shape certain facets of Combs' public image. In those docs, and this is where it gets relevant, there is one man that is named as being the person that can do the cleanups, right? This is the guy that you are supposed to call if you get into any sort of a scenario. So in these docs, it says, Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact 
Mr. Muhammad, that is Fahim Muhammad, if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. In 1998, Diddy launched his yearly Hampton gatherings, reminiscent of a contemporary Gatsby affair, where all white attire was the norm. These opulent events swiftly garnered him a reputation as a modern day socialite icon. The guest list was a melting pot of industry titans, including music executives, artists, actors, real estate magnates, and even sports team owners. However, April 16th, 1999 marked a pivotal moment. Combs found himself entangled in legal troubles when he was arrested and charged with criminal mischief. The charges stemmed from an altercation where it was alleged that Combs, along with two bodyguards, mistreated record executive Steve Stout. Stout claimed they attacked him using their fists, a telephone, a champagne bottle, and even a chair. During a public apology, Combs purportedly compensated Stout with $500,000, resulting in Stout withdrawing the charges. Instead, Combs pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of misconduct and was sentenced to one day of anger management classes. On December 27, 1999, Combs, accompanied by his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and rapper Sean, faced arrest in connection to a shooting at Club New York. Although Combs was charged with weapons violations, he was eventually acquitted in March 2000. The year 2000 saw the debut of the reality TV competition Making the Band on ABC, later airing on MTV. Spanning 12 seasons, the show featured Combs on the hunt for new talent to form bands like Day 26 and Danity Kane, both of which were signed to Bad Boy Records, becoming cultural staples for MTV. On March 26, 2001, Roger Mills, a local TV host, initiated legal action against Combs, alleging mistreatment, false imprisonment, destruction of property, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and civil conspiracy. These accusations arose from an incident where Combs' entourage purportedly confronted Mills, resulting in the rough handling of Mills and damage to his camera. In response, a spokesperson for Combs mentioned they couldn't provide specific comments on the allegations since they hadn't received the formal complaint. Despite the ensuing legal Legal dispute, a jury sided with Combs in 2004, dismissing the claims as unfounded and viewed as an exploitation of his celebrity status for media attention. A lawsuit from December 2023 claims that in 2003, Sean Diddy Combs, his former president of Bad Boy Records, Harve Pierre, and an unidentified third man engaged in a terrifying incident in which they allegedly gang unidentified 17-year-old victim at a recording studio in Manhattan. This adds a disturbing dimension to Combs' story. Fast forward to July 6, 2004, when Combs made a grand entrance at his annual all-white Hamptons party. This time, he arrived with the Declaration of Independence, signaling a new level of fortune and braggadocio for the mogul. In 2005, a significant encounter unfolded between music mogul Combs and songstress Cassie Ventura, who was 19 years old. At 37, Combs showed keen interest in signing Ventura to his renowned label, Bad Boy Entertainment. By February 2006, Ventura sealed a 10-album contract with Bad Boy Entertainment, debuting with the hit single Me and You, followed by a self-titled album later that year. However, recent legal proceedings shed light on a darker narrative. In a lawsuit filed in November 2023, Cassie Ventura unveiled distressing allegations against Combs. She described this era as the inception of a harrowing cycle of mistreatment. Ventura accuses Combs of subjecting her to years of physical, psychological, and emotional torment. Well, last year, things got interesting because Combs' ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Allegations range from coercion into consuming illicit substances to being filmed in compromising situations with male workers. Ventura further claims instances of physical violence as punishment for mere interactions with other men. On October 24, 2007, Combs assumed the role of marketing ambassador and stakeholder for Kirok Vodka, catalyzing a significant surge in sales and solidifying his association with the brand. However, March 6, 2007 marked a contrasting episode when Combs became embroiled in a lawsuit filed by Gerard Recknitzer. So, Recknitzer alleged that Combs mistreated him, shoved his girlfriend, and made an attempt to spit on another woman outside Teddy's nightclub at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Combs' attorney, Benjamin Braffman, swiftly dismissed these claims, characterizing them as an opportunistic exploitation of Combs' celebrity status. Eventually, the case 
case reached an out-of-court settlement in March 2008, the terms of which remain undisclosed. These incidents cast a complex and disconcerting shadow over Combs' multifaceted career and personal life. On the 11th of May, 2007, Lorianne Gibson, a co-star of Making the Band, lodged a police complaint against Diddy, alleging that he menaced her with a chair while Michael Bivens from New Edition restrained her. Combs attorney Benjamin Braffman defended the incident, arguing that Gibson had exaggerated in response to stage theatrics meant for the cameras. Sources hinted to the New York Daily News that Combs had demanded the cameras be shut off during the altercation. Braffman dismissed the accusation as yet another fabricated claim by someone seeking to exploit Sean's fame and success. Meanwhile, Cassie Ventura made startling claims regarding her relationship with Combs back in 2010. She asserted that Combs wielded significant control over various aspects of her life. Ventura alleged that he not only covered her apartment and living expenses, but also had access to her medical records, including MRI results when she suffered memory loss, possibly from substance use or injuries inflicted by Combs. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. Additionally, Ventura claimed that Combs arranged for his staff to transport her to medical appointments, further solidifying his dominance over her. Moving forward to February 2012, the lawsuit detailed Ventura's accusations that Combs even threatened her then-boyfriend, rapper Kid Cudi. Ventura had made clear his intentions to destroy Kid Cudi's car and made sure that Kid Cudi was at home with friends when the explosion occurred. Remarkably, right around that time, Kid Cudi's car indeed exploded in his driveway. Kid Cudi confirmed this in a statement to the New York Times on October 21, 2013. Expanding his ventures, Combs launched the cable news network Revolt TV. This venture later expanded into radio, digital, and film spaces. On January 8, 2014, Combs announced a new partnership with Diageo, leading to the creation creation of Dion Tequila. Once again, his name was associated with a prominent liquor brand. In 2015, Combs marked the 20th milestone of Bad Boy Records with a commemorative box set and a tour showcasing iconic artists from the label. Fast forward to September 2018, and the once tumultuous relationship between Cassie Ventura and Sean Diddy Combs took a distressing turn. Despite numerous attempts by Ventura to sever ties with Combs, she reluctantly agreed to meet him for dinner, believing it was to discuss the conclusion of her bad boy contract and the permanent end of their relationship. However, the evening took a sinister turn as Ventura alleged that Combs forcibly entered her apartment and mistreated her. But this one felt a little different because we're like, okay, but she's known you for a very long time and these allegations are quite weird but we never got a follow up there because then he very quickly settled with her for an undisclosed amount. Amidst grave accusations, Ventura took resolute action to liberate herself from her enduring tormentor. This entailed departing the residence provided by Combs and relinquishing the car he had bestowed upon her. By June 26, 2022, Sean Diddy Combs received the esteemed Lifetime Achievement Award at the BET Awards, highlighted by a performance featuring a medley of his chart-topping hits alongside special guest appearances. Fast forward to October 28, 2022, Forbes heralded a remarkable milestone for Combs. His ascent to billionaire status was officially confirmed. During the period spanning 2022 to 2023, his financial prowess blossomed, credited largely to his lucrative dealings with Diageo Revolt TV and assorted ventures within the music industry. However, amid this success, a shadow cast upon Combs' character surfaced in a lawsuit initiated in February 2024 by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Jones, once a collaborator on Combs' album, The Love Album Off The Grid, shockingly accused the music mogul of repetitive acts of groping. Even more alarming were Jones' assertions that Combs coerced him into engaging with workers, partaking in illicit substances, and other nefarious activities during the album's production. The lawsuit further implicated Justin Dior Combs, Sean's son, as well as senior members of M-Town Records and Universal Music Group named as co-defendants in the case. September 15th, 2023 stood as a pivotal juncture when Sean Diddy Combs was honored with a key to the city by New York Mayor Eric Adams, underscoring his profound influence and contributions to the metropolis. However, the narrative took a sharp turn on November 16th, 2023, as Cassie Ventura initiated a civil lawsuit against Diddy, alleging a litany of egregious offenses, including misconduct, trafficking, and more. 
This legal maneuver, executed under New York's Adult Survivors Act, opened a window for survivors of mistreatment to pursue civil litigation, regardless of the passage of time. Tiffany Redd, a renowned songwriter known for her collaborations with Cassie, publicly supported Cassie's allegations. I think justice looks like Diddy being behind bars, and I also think that justice looks like everybody getting retribution for all of the things. The amount of therapy, like I just said, all of my, all of the moments, the time, like these are our careers. However, Sean Combs, through his attorney Benjamin Braffman, vehemently refuted the accusations. Combs asserted that Ventura had persistently demanded $30 million over a span of six months, threatening to write a damaging book about their relationship. Despite the initial legal confrontation, just a day after Ventura filed her lawsuit, Combs and Ventura reached a settlement outside of court for an undisclosed sum. Ventura gracefully conveyed her intention to settle the issue with mutual understanding, emphasizing the importance of maintaining control. Holmes, in response, extended his heartfelt wishes for her and her family, ending his message with a simple expression of affection. As the storm of allegations against Diddy continued to gather momentum throughout late 2023 and early 2024, the situation reached a climax. On November 23, 2023, just a day before the deadline for filing suits under the Adult Survivors Act, two distinct lawsuits were lodged against Combs in the New York Superior Court. Joy Dickerson filed one lawsuit alleging misconduct in the early 1990s, while another lawsuit lawsuit filed by an unnamed plaintiff joined the increasing number of accusations by November 28, 2023. In response to these lawsuits, Combs temporarily stepped down as chairman of Revolt TV on December 6, 2023. Additionally, on the same day, another anonymous accuser came forward, alleging gang rape by Combs and others in 2003. It was also on December 6, 2023, that Combs broke his silence on the accusations via his Instagram account, emphatically denying them with the caption, enough is enough. On December 10, 2023, the echoes of accusations resounded as 18 prominent brands severed their connections with Combs' black-owned e-commerce venture, Power Global. The fallout persisted into December 11, 2023, with the emergence of a public petition spearheaded by the feminist and survivor advocacy group Ultraviolet. This petition urged the Recording Academy to retract Combs' 2024 Grammy nomination for his progressive R&B album, citing the mistreatment allegations. In response to escalating pressure, the Recording Academy issued a statement on December 11th, 2023, acknowledging the gravity of the situation and affirming their careful examination of the matter. On December 13th, 2023, Hulu made the decision to abandon a reality show project featuring Combs and his family that had been in the works. This move came amidst allegations surrounding the mogul. Consequently, the show's development was halted. The ramifications of these allegations also reached the Grammy Awards. On January 12th, 2024, a spokesperson for Combs confirmed that he would not be present at the ceremony. As a result, he was noticeably absent from both the awards show and any associated public events. Finally, on January 16th, 2024, Diageo and Combs reached a resolution in their legal dispute concerning product marketing, officially severing their professional ties. In the latest turn of events, legal woes for Diddy have taken a sharp upward trajectory. Renowned music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones has dropped a legal bombshell, filing a substantial 70-page lawsuit against the iconic hip-hop figure. Lodged in the Southern District of New York on Monday, Jones's lawsuit is packed with explosive claims. And then even more women started coming out saying they were victims of Diddy, and then it seemed like an avalanche, and he issued a very strong statement condemning them for essentially extortion attempts and trying to murky his name. A man named Rodney Jones has come forward to sue Diddy, and this is not your average lawsuit. I will say right now, many lawsuits are in fact frivolous. I have fought and won frivolous lawsuits. Among them, he alleges that Combs engaged in misconduct, pressured him into substance use, and withheld a hefty sum of $50,000 owed for his contributions to the Grammy-nominated album, The Love Album, Off the Grid. This legal action signifies a notable milestone as Jones becomes the first man to publicly accuse the bad boy entertainment founder of such egregious acts of misconduct. The accusations entail Combs engaging in multiple instances of unwelcome touching, including groping Jones's anus and crotch without consent. Additionally, he is alleged to have covertly influenced and recorded guests at his residences, employing firearms to instill fear and endeavoring to manipulate Jones into a homosexual relationship by showing explicit videos under the guise of industry norms. According to Jones, his time working with Combs was marred by a series of troubling incidents that transcended the boundaries of his role as a producer. These incidents purportedly included incessant demands for recording, which he found excessive. Furthermore, Jones claims to have amassed a substantial trove of footage and audio recordings documenting illicit 
explicit activities involving Combs, his entourage, and various guests. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.